answers to the quiz questions that uh, were given today. And uh, the first question talks about a child pulling a three kilogram sled across level ground at constant velocity. Uh, with a light rope that makes an angle 34 degrees above the horizontal, the tension of the rope is 5 newtons. Assuming the acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meter per second squared, what is the coefficient of friction between the sled and the ground? Okay, so that's the 3 kilogram sled. The force is being applied at an angle of 34 degrees. The tension is 5 newtons. Okay, now... Here we have uh, the weight of the sled acting vertically down mg, that's the normal reaction and friction is opposite to the motion. And then this tension is given as 5 newtons and that has to be resolved into two components. One is going to be the horizontal which is 5 cos 34 and the vertical is going to be 5 sin 34. Okay, so that's 5 cos 34. And the vertical component will be 5 sine 34. Now that's mg and then friction. And uh, all right. So we also have the normal reaction. So these two components, so one is the normal reaction, the other is 5 sine 34, which is 2.80. Okay. Now, you can see, when you consider the forces along the y-axis, you have one, two, three forces. Now, since it's not having an acceleration along the y-axis, surely the sum of these two must be equal to this. Okay? So that means Fn is 29.4 minus 2.80 and once you have the normal force you can find the friction because friction is mu fn right mu times fn so it's mu times 26.6 that is the friction now consider the motion along the x-axis now what are the forces that you have along the x-axis you have one force here 4.14 and you have friction opposite to that therefore the, the net force is 4.14 minus 26.6 mu which should be equal to mass times acceleration the acceleration is zero here why because it says it's moving at constant velocity constant velocity so the acceleration is zero which means the right hand side is zero, so you can solve for mu. Mu is 0 0.156. Brings us to the second question. You have a four kilogram block and a three kilogram block. And uh, you, you're supposed to find the force to be applied in order to just make the four kilogram block move. Now what's important here is to understand, or to visualize that there is no tension in the string. Why? Because it's only when you apply a huge force that there's going to be a tension in the string, right? So if it's just going to make it move, you can assume that the tension in the string is zero. And uh, so the only force that's acting against the applied force is the friction here, which would be 4 plus 3, 7 times 9.8 times mu. Okay, because there's 7 kilograms acting here, and you got to take mg, so it's 7 times 9.8 times mu. And then the friction here is 3 times 9.8 times mu. So that's the force that you got to apply. So F minus the two friction forces minus the tension equal to zero. But the tension is zero here because it's just beginning to move. So when you do that, when you do the calculation, you get 
YouTube. So it was not mathematically tough, but there is uh, a conceptual crisis there, okay? Number three, a box is sliding down and inclined, tilted at an angle for 14 degrees above the horizontal. The box is sliding down to incline at a speed of 1.70 meter per second. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.380. How far does the box slide down the incline before coming to rest? Uh, first of all, you've got to find the acceleration. Now, let's look at the forces acting. The weight acts vertically down, resolved into mg sine theta and mg cos theta. And then you have the normal reaction, Fn, and friction, which is opposite to the motion. Okay. And looking at the acceleration along the x-axis, remember that's the x-axis now. So you only took look at the net force along the x-axis. And what are those forces? There's mg sine theta down, friction up. So the net force is mg sine theta minus friction. But what's friction? Friction is mu times Fn, right? Mu times Fn. And Fn is equal to mg cos theta. Fn is equal to mg cos theta. So I've written all of that in one step now. So mu mg cos theta by the mass. The masses get cancelled. So G is 9.8 sine 14 minus mu is 0 0.380, 9.8 cos 14 gives you negative 1.24 meter per second squared. Of course, it's uh, decelerating, it's slowing down. Now use the kinematics equation. The initial velocity is 1.70, final is 0. Got to find delta x and acceleration is negative. 1.24. Use the equation Vf squared is equal to V naught squared plus 2A delta x. Rearrange and calculate for delta x. And you get the answer as 1.16 meter. Brings us to the fourth one which is really straightforward. An airplane is flying with constant speed of 300 meter per second along a horizontal circle with a radius of 15,000 meter. If the lift force of the air on the wings is perpendicular to the wings, at what angle relative to the horizontal should the wings be banked? Now, this is about banking. And it doesn't matter that it's talking about an airplane. You apply the equation for banking that we know is tan theta is v squared by rg velocity is 300 radius is 15,000 g is 9.8 that gives you 0.6122 and when you take the arc tangent you get 31.5 degrees now that was not tough either okay so now fifth one uh, I did this in class already, so um, here I go. The drag force is proportional to the square of its speed, and the object falls with an acceleration of 4 meter per second squared downward when it is falling at 70 meter per second. What is its terminal velocity? Now, uh, the net force can be found out by looking at its weight acting down minus the drag force acting up. So the weight minus drag force is the net force should be equal to mass times acceleration. Now rearrange that and find the constant B. All these terms are given. And uh, 174 by 4, 4900, which gives 0 0.035 Newton meter squared, second squared. Okay, that's just looking at the units. In the second case, uh, what is its terminal velocity? When it's falling with terminal velocity, its weight, mg, is exactly balanced by the drag force. So, the weight, mg, is now equal to the drag force. Okay and then make the terminal velocity, Vt, the subject, 
You get 91 meter per second. Number six, a 60 kilo, I mean a 600 kilogram car is going around a curve with a radius of 120 meter that is banged at an angle of 25 degrees with a speed of 30 meter per second. The equation of static friction between the car and the road is given as 0 0.300. What is the force exerted by friction on the car? You know, really so many unnecessary terms are given here. The coefficient of stat I mean the frictional force is just come on. You know, you may be inclined to find the centripetal force first, like mv squared they are, but really it's of no use. Okay, that's six hundred times thirty squared by one twenty, that's that's forty five hundred newton, but that's not required because frictional force is just mu times Fn, isn't it? And Fn is mg cos theta. So that gives the frictional force is fifteen hundred and ninety newtons. That brings us to the seventh question. Two masses are connected by a string which goes over an ideal pulley as shown. Block A has a mass of 3 kg and can slide along a rough inclined plane 30 degrees to the horizontal. The coefficient of kinetic friction between block A and the plane is 0.4. Block B has a mass of 2.77 kg. What is the acceleration of the blocks? This is a nice question uh, and it's very important that you understand how it's done you got to look at the forces acting on each object. When you look at B, there are only two forces that act on it. One is its weight mg acting straight down, vertically down. The second is the tension in the string. And when you look at these two masses, you know that this is going to pull it down. Although this is a three kilogram mass, it's on an inclined plane, so Surely mg sine theta is less, and so b is going to go down, a is going to go up the ramp. Okay, so there are two forces acting on b, one is mg, the other is ft. And then when you come to a, its weight acts vertically down, broken up into two components, mg sine theta and mg cos theta. Then you have the normal reaction and then you have friction down. So we've done this a million times, so let's take another look at it. So those are the components acting on both objects. So here you have Ft and Mg, and since this object B is moving down, the net force on it will be Mg minus Ft is equal to Ma. Plug in the numbers, 2.77 times 9.8, Minus Ft is equal to its mass times the acceleration. Alright, so that gives 27.1 minus Ft is 2.77a, equation 1. And then when you look at the object B, mg sine theta, force of friction, mg cos theta, and Fn. And of course there is Ft in the string acting there. So when you consider the motion along the x-axis, there are only three forces. Ft minus mg sine theta minus friction. Ft minus mg sine theta minus friction should be equal to its mass times acceleration. Mass is 3, 9.8 times sine 30 minus friction. Okay, friction now is mu times Fn, right? Mu times Fn, and Fn is equal to mg was a mistake. All right, so it's mu n and well, it's mu times mg cos theta. Okay, is equal to three a. Rearrange that and then calculate. Uh, you get another equation: Ft minus twenty four point nine because when you add these two, you get twenty four point nine is equal to 3a. You have two equations, add one with two, the FTs will get cancelled, 
take the difference between 27.1 and 24.9 and then you will get 5.77a here when you add them solve it you get 0.38 meter per second squared this I should say is the best question in this group brings us to number 8 a child is standing on a playground merry-go-round a distance of 1.50 meter from the rotation axis the coefficient of static friction is given as 0.7 and you got to find the maximum constant angular speed. Well, in this case, because it's going round, it's the centripetal force given by mv squared by r, which is balanced by friction, mu mg. Masses get cancelled and find the velocity. Plug in the numbers given there. Radius 1.5, 9.8. Was given as 9.81 anyway. Okay, so you get approximately 3.2 meter per second, and now you've got to find the angular speed. And angular speed is linear speed divided by radius. So 3.2 divided by 1.5, and I had mentioned this in class today. So you get 2.14 radian per second. Brings us to the last question because number 10 is repeated. And number nine is a straightforward question. Two kilogram ball. Speed is given as five meter per second. And you got to find the acceleration. It's going around. So it's centripetal acceleration, which is V squared by R. That is 50 meter per second squared. And so these were the ten questions. Actually nine, because one is repeated. And it doesn't look so bad now, right? Okay, so when you get through it, Hang in there, we're going to go through tougher times, but you will learn a lot in the process. Thank you and good luck.